Hello. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Milan, for the introduction. I can't really express my gratitude to be here a year later after being here in Porto. So thank you very much for, again, attending. Today, I will try to put some light on how can any website benefit from WordPress editing experience thanks to Gutenberg. So let's start and let's take my remote because I'll definitely need it. So a quick presentation about myself. I am CEO of Vibe Studio. It's a WordPress agency for enterprise development and custom coding. I have been doing web development since 2003, and my first touch to WordPress was six years later in 2009. Through the years, I have worked on roughly 1,000 and many more websites, and the clients of our companies. company is uh, from four different continents. Despite it's a lightning session, I would like to spare a moment to thank my team because without them, this topic and this presentation won't be possible in general. So let's take a moment to recognize the team efforts. Two of my best, Ivan Vyachki, Svetlana Dicheva, thanks. You can meet them in the hall and uh, let's say hi. Um, we will quickly do a topic overview so we can be all aware what are we going to uh, talk about. We are going to revise the WordPress editing experience and how it is superior than any other online editing. We will take a brief look at the WordPress builders and also the power and importance of uh, Gutenberg. Also, we will see the challenges for non-CMS websites or any online app er, and online application in general and their inflexibility compared to WordPress but also how they can still benefit from WordPress, all of the enterprises, mobile apps, third-party web apps, everyone. Uh, we'll see how Gutenberg comes to the rescue and makes this all possible, and finally take a look of the life cycle of such process. So, we are all familiar with WordPress editing experience, and it is unparalleled to any other editor there. We all know that we use WordPress because it is super user-friendly. Back in the days when Vibe Studio got uh, its first clients, the, one of my selling points was that using WordPress for editing your website is no harder than just managing a text document, and this is all the skills you need to maintain the content. I still believe this is one of the main advantages of using WordPress. The other advantages we are all familiar with is that WordPress is super SEO friendly and it is loved by the search engines. And um, in the last years, I think a lot of efforts have been added to make WordPress also um, accessibility, uh, to improve the accessibility of how the WordPress products are used, which is super important nowadays. And finally, uh, last but not least, is the community and support. We all know that the reason WordPress is great is the community itself. And if you have any question how to use it, you can find the answer easily by the community. Um, to expand the topic, um, in order to make the WordPress editing experience even greater, there are a lot of uh, what you see is what you get builders. We all know them. They are super famous. You can see most of them outside the halls. And they all provide great editing experience. We can't argue that. They're improving with the time. It is superb. However, um, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of Star Wars fans here. We all know that Darth Vader is the strongest, but he can't basically live without his mask. And I think it's the same with most of the builders, which are acting as third-party builders. They can't live without WordPress. However, Gutenberg, who is inaugural part of WordPress, is um, fully, it, it can provide content to any other system because it is generating HTML, it relies on full independency from the additional post metadata tables of uh, the post storage in the traditional WordPress architecture, and also Gutenberg as a system is working natively. It is not required to install an additional plugin in order to have Gutenberg. It just works. <laughs> it even can be disabled, but it's another topic. Um, when it comes to managing WordPress uh, website content in general, not just WordPress, 
we need to take a look that for the non-CMS websites or any online-based uh, application in general, there are a lot of challenges. For example, those non-CMS online applications lacks the ability to do layout changes quickly, lacks the ability to manage the admin area, they lack the ability to create new landing pages quickly, and whenever the marketing team needs to react quickly and efficiently, they are not able to do it without the help of a, word, of a developer who can help them to make even the smallest changes. Um, in my career, I have even seen that some enterprise websites who are customly built in order to make a marketing campaign, they're building um, a subdomain web page that is connected with some CNAME records to third part services uh, that are allowing full website editing, which I think is not that, um, it's not making the results that needs to be achieved. It's not working natively. You are disconnected with your website structure. It basically creates more issues rather than solutions. However, enterprises and non-CMS WordPress webs non-CMS websites in general, sorry, or online applications in general, they can still benefit from WordPress. And this is thankfully to Gutenberg. Gutenberg can comes to the rescue for all of those websites and online apps. We all know the motto from uh, for the 20th anniversary of WordPress. It is called from blocks to blocks, and it, I can't total I can't agree more. We all know that uh, Gutenberg allows us to divide the content to individual blocks, and each of these blocks can represent any different type of content, like text, image, video, or whatever visual representation of how our website monetizes and um, communicates with the clients who are in the website. On the top of that, blocks can be easily moved, edited, they can be styled, they can be basically reused and even repeated on the same page. So this is all possible through Gutenberg. What is uh, the um, biggest advantage of um, Gutenberg is not the flexibility of editing, because this is something that is presented by other web builders as well. It is how it actually um, saves and generates the content and the data when it comes to the development side of the things. And we can separate this into five different um, points. It is that uh, Gutenberg provides simplified data management. It is the portability and compatibility of Gutenberg. It is a factor that benefits with search engine optimization. It is that Gutenberg provides future-proof content. And last but not least is the performance and speed. So when it comes to data management, Gutenberg stores the data in the database in the form of HTML, which is a universal language, and it is understood by all web browsers and all um, web applications. It is universal across, no matter if you're using WordPress, a non-WordPress website, online app, or whatever, they all can read HTML. This contrasts with certain plugins that store data as metadata, and basically it only makes sense if you're using the plugin. And if you want to use it outside of the concept of this plugin, you need to code a lot more because it is not um, universal. When it comes to por portability and compatibility, as we mentioned, uh, the usage of uh, HTML basically um, allows this provided content to be used everywhere. And on the top of that, when it comes to search engine optimization, HTML is super easy to read. It is what the search engines uh, requires. And this allows the website to be read. Also, it is super future-proof and durable because HTML is likely to remain. It's even likely to improve, but the skeleton in the base will be basically unchanged. On the other hand, metadata can become obsolete. Last but not least, HTML is typically quicker to load than metadata tables, and it can lead to improved site performance. Um, generating the content with um, Gutenberg basically requires a technology to pass this content to the third-party application, to the non-CMS websites. 
Happily, um, we have different options to do that when it comes to WordPress. Those different options can be uh, separated. Uh, two of them can be REST API and GraphQL. In order to compare them, REST API, its biggest advantage is that it is supported by default in WordPress. It provides all of the data regarding a single post or page into universal JSON format. It is super well documented. And if we can find a disadvantage is that it relies on many endpoints. On the other hand, GraphQL, it is supported, but with an additional plugin. It um, outputs the data, data in an SQL-like format. It is also well documented, but it requires a lot more digging. And the, big, but the biggest advantage that is away in front of REST API is that it relies on a single endpoint, which is important for your development path. Um, in order to see in, um, in fact how such a setup can look, we can take a look at the life cycle of um, such structure. So most importantly, we need first, when, when let's say we have a non-CMS website, it is let's say for a highly enterprise and we can't afford to use non-custom website, but our marketing team still needs the ability to change the data and to upload landing pages whenever they need. So this is what a possibility um, lifecycle of the app can look using WordPress. First, we need to create the predefined blocks, which um, for the process, let's say the UI and the UX team, they are designing the different set of blocks we are going to use in our websites. And then the developers are coding them into Gutenberg blocks. The second step is that the marketing team starts working with those blocks. So every page that is on the non-CMS website is presented on WordPress, and they can basically change the content, reuse those blocks, and just call a block that they need, reorder the design, add the content, text, and images, and just saves it. They can choose their colors, their text, whatever. Finally, the developers, using the technologies that we showed in the previous slide, REST API, REST API or Open Graph, they use those to pass the data to the third-party site or app, and they code it in a way whenever a new call, a new content is made, this to be immediately represented on the third-party application. In order to conclude all of this, I believe that the flexibility of WordPress editing eventually, and also the evolution of other technologies and other coding languages different than PHP, it is possible that ultimately the main product of what WordPress is about is not itself the WordPress as a core tool, but the editing experience that is provided by the Gutenberg as a solely tool. I believe um, this is uh, what WordPress can still benefit rocking in front of other technologies that are available on the market and not only keep its percentage of usage, but also increase it at some point. Of course, this is just a suggestion. Um, I'm sure that whatever happens in future, the, the community that is in front of us and uh, the WordPress community, we will just face it and we'll, we will benefit in the ultimate way possible. That's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention.